Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG and Games, and I'm going to be continuing my Blender Modifiers tutorial series. Now, in the last one, we showed how you can make open ended objects using the Solidify modifier, and we showed how that's useful for game developers and also game assets and also 3D modelers. So, in this tutorial, we are going to be covering the uh, don't let me the, so, the subdivision surface. That's right. We're going to be covering the subdivision surface modifier. Now, the subdivision surface modifier is a really cool modifier, and I can't wait to get into it because it's actually a really complex version of a standard function in here. Uh, but before we get started, don't forget to check out our website up here. Also, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. There's also a link down there, um, and there's a little white logo down there. And then also, don't forget to follow us on social media, Twitter, Google+, and Instagram. If you have any suggestions for tutorials, leave a comment there or in this video. You can tweet us. Well, I'll try to respond to all the tweets or comments on Instagram. And yeah, so now let's get started. So one of the best examples I've found of the subdivision modif surface modifier is for making rocks. Now, rocks are pretty hard in general because they don't really have a set shape. Now you could kind of get at it if I delete this object and I hit Shift A and add a UV sphere. I can kind of make a rock by, um, like I don't know, like playing around with this, and I could kind of get that, but that's not what we want. And I mean, I can move vertices around and stuff like that, but no rock is completely round, and that's where this comes in. I'm going to hit Command M so that we get a new project. I'm going to, so now I'm going to go to the modifiers and add the subdivision surface modifier. So you'll see that it does, and it adds um, 26, goes from 8 to 26. And if I actually go into rendered view, you can't see it in here, but this render right here, if I rendered this out right now, I'm just going to do that real quick, you'll see that that's a sphere, a perfect sphere. Why would it do that? Well, one of the reasons it does that is because of a function in Blender called View and Render. Now, this is to speed up your viewport. Let's say you had, I don't know, this really complex scene with a ton of rocks. Well, one thing you can actually do is you can take this, and if you change this, like let's say you had all kinds of vertices and stuff, you could change the subdivision surface on the render to three. And if I go ahead and render this again, you'll see it's almost a perfect sphere. So, but it's only like that right there. So what I usually do is I usually put it on two and also on two for the view so that it's always the same. Now your computer might not be able to handle this, mine can, but if it can't just bump the views down to one and you should be fine. So that's the Catmull Clark method. Um, all it does is just subdivide it. Now you can actually uncheck that so that it creates new vertices and doesn't subdivide your old vertices. So if we had subdivide UVs and then we applied this modifier, now we have 96 faces. And they're all right there. But if I hit Command Z a few times, not in edit mode, and I change this and I uncheck this, you'll see it does the same thing, but that's because of how we're using it. Alright, I'm going to tab out and I'm going to Okay. So I'm going to keep that there, and I'm just going to leave subdivide UVs on right now. And now we have to have the modifier on. We can't apply it and then mess around with it or else it won't work. Because if I apply it, and then I go into edit mode and I move a vertice, none of the others change. And that's where this um, modifier is so helpful. So now I've got that modifier back, and I'm going to hit tab. Now you'll notice that a gray box appears around it. This is called your region box, or it's, that's what I call it. What it allows you to do is manipulate the mesh proportionately however you like. So you can actually, you can't scale up vertices. I think you could scale up edges though. So you can get some really cool effects just by playing around with this. So like you can move parts of the rock up and it's a really simple way to get that abnormal shape that a rock normally is in. But you might be wondering, well you can do that, but what about, we only have, eight control points. How do we get more? Well, the answer is simple. You just hit A a few times, and then you hit, scroll down like you normally would, subdivide. Now you have more options, and that actually looks r much more like a rock, if you ask me. So I'm going to rotate this on the x-axis, uh, 180 degrees. Okay, we need to rotate on the x-axis more, like that. And you can see that we're starting to come 
together. Now we have more control points and I can raise these and lower these as much as I want by hitting GZ. I can lower this down and I can also move it in. And you can get really cool results by just playing around with a few vertices. So like I can move this one in, I can move this one in, like down and in like that. And you can actually make some really cool shapes and this is all built into Blender. You can make indentions. Now all this is a cop um, you can do with like sculpting and stuff like that. But I find this method much quicker for stuff like rocks and low poly things like that. Now when you're done, now actually it's actually pretty cool. You can actually also, if it's slowing down your computer, because you have so many subdivisions, the same shape will be the same. The shape will be the same, my bad. So you can actually export this model as, um, if you're doing um, level of detail groups, as one of the guys in the comment, um, comment box said earlier, if you're doing, um, those, that's what the LOD boxes are, level of detail boxes. It's where you can like, I explained it a little bit in the remesh tutorial. I'll put a link right about there for that. So if you were using this, you could export it with one view, then you could export it with two views, and then you could export it with three views on smooth so that you get that consistent thing. And if I just turn this down, you'll see that it starts becoming more low poly and also looks like would look better off from a distance because 98 vertices is going to queue better than 1,538. So that is the subsurf modifier or I believe it's the subdivision, oops, I'm trying to expand this window. Well, it's called the subsurf, but it's the subdivision service modifier. Um, you can use it for Catmull Clark, or you can go all out and you can use the simple, which I don't find much use for yet, but the Catmull Clark is the way to go. That's just the normal subdivide. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys like this video. If you like this video, um, check out our late, our previous video on the solidify modifier. That was I've mentioned that tutorials are fun tutorial to make so go check it out and also don't forget to follow us on social media i'll put links right there and then if you want to subscribe there's a little white jg at games logo right there where you can hover over and subscribe don't forget to check out our website thanks for watching guys and i'll see you guys next time